Over the past three and a half years, I've managed three businesses, my website, my app, as well as this YouTube channel, all while being a student of medicine, one of the most difficult courses in the world and never failing in it. And I attribute all of this to the way I manage my time and how I make an effective timetable which I follow every single day for the past years. If you didn't know me, hi, my name is Anuj. I'm finally an MBBS student at GMC Nagpur. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you exactly how you can do the same. Chapter one, how to make an effective timetable. Step one is calculate the amount of fixed time you have in your life. Fixed time is the time in which you are spending doing these activities which you cannot control something like school tuition job sleep all of that you can't control so all of that time cannot be managed so you just have to remove that time from the equation and focus on only the things which you can control so for me the fixed time would be like five to six hours of college every day six to seven hours of sleep and one to two hours of personal stuff as well as, well as filming these videos since i have now removed the fixed time from my timetable i know exactly what time i'm left with so that i could make a timetable which fits me and i could get more work done step two decide what are your objectives in the free time that you have so for me there are only four objectives first one is to study a lot because final year of course second film this youtube videos third do the personal stuff and four go to the gym so these are the four objectives which i've got in my hands and in this timetable i'll be including all of these four things now here what you can also do is make subcategories into each of these sections for example studies make a subcategory for reading that is self studies for question banks and for watching videos once you have that you can now prioritize which ones are more important and which ones are less so for me studies are the most important part over here filming and going to the gym are not so important the second most important thing is the personal stuff that is going out with family, going out with friends and enjoying life in general because what's the meaning of life if you're just working 24-7. I also be specific and write like four or five lectures every single day, two or three question banks and, and reading at least one and a half hour each day. Now that I know what the fixed time I have and what I have to do in my free time, it's very easy for me to know how to arrange these things in the way that I want them to happen. Next, set up daily and weekly objectives for the same. Weekly objectives should tell you what you have to get accomplished in a week. So, so for a med student, that could be something like completely respiratory as well as CVS or completing GI as well as neuro. If you're a neat aspirant that could look something like reading three chapters of biology, two of physics and solving the entire question bank of let's say laws of motion. So all of these things will let you know what you have to do each single day so that your objectives get completed at the end of the week. Chapter 2. How to make the timetable last and how to follow it for a long period of time. Now this is the most important part of this video. First thing, keep everything very very real. You know your capabilities and you know the things which you can't do. So if you're writing in your timetable studying six hours every single day and you can't do it, that's never gonna happen. So you're gonna fail your timetable in the very first day. That means you will never follow it till the end of the time. So keep your timetable achievable as well as realistic according to you. Because somebody would be able to study seven to eight hours a day, but you might not be able to do that. But that's honestly okay. Because if you're doing small, small studies every single day, that is much more better than doing studies seven hour once a day, never doing it again. The, the idea here is to keep it simple as well as fun because you're going to repeat it every single day and you don't want it to get monotonous. Second, most people don't realize this, but you do actually need a lot of breaks to function. Last time I talked about this phenomenon of diminishing returns which happens when you keep on doing the same activity over and over again so your productivity decreases after a certain amount of time. The same will happen with you if you if you constantly keep going from one work to other work without giving yourself proper rest. So having a break of at least half an hour every two hours will be so so beneficial for you. You can even take the break longer as much as it suits you but don't overdo it because tomorrow entire day will turn into break if you do that. Most productive people according to a research study work around 52 minutes and take 17 minutes break so that the most amount of effective work is done in the first 52 minutes. Third thing is something which I follow by my heart is always keep a day off and for me that is Sunday because the entire week I'm doing so many things going to college and studying and whatnot that one day my body physically needs to rest and on that day I try not to do anything at all I just take it as a rest day except when exams are coming because those are emergency situations and at that time the timetable completely changes. What I suggest for all of you is that don't take a Sunday off because Sunday could be your most productive day. There are two reasons for that. First one is because it's a complete day from start to the end and you get to study or do whatever you want like three or four times more than normal. So you can do a lot of things on that day. As well as my video releases at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So if you watch that video, you will get motivated and you will end up studying the entire day or doing your work for the entire day. If you haven't already subscribed, consider doing so because that would be awesome. Anyways, what you should do is that you should keep Saturday as your entire day off because Saturday is the weekend and you probably don't feel like studying already. Take Saturday as a break. Get back to your timetable on Sunday with a very big job. The fourth point is again something which I follow by a lot that is eat the frog. Eat the frog the first thing in the morning. This was something said by Mark Twain which I also talked about in one of my earlier videos. If you want to eat a frog, eat it first thing in the morning. It basically says that eating a frog is one of the most difficult activities a human can do. As you can imagine a frog is not very delicious and it is a very slimy creature and it's pretty gross. And once you have to swallow that thing down your throat, it's going to be so difficult. The same way there are certain things in your life which are very very difficult. For 
example solving question banks or for example watching videos or going to the gym these are the things which are very very difficult in life so what should you do do them first thing in the morning because then you don't have to worry about doing them later in the day or later in the week this can also apply to different assignments or projects that you're given because what happens is that if we do small small pieces of our assignment or our project every day we don't have to think about doing it all together when the final due date comes the same way if you eat the frog the first thing in the morning you don't have to think about eating 15 or 20 frogs at the end of the week in the book titled eat the frog by brian tracy he, he talks about the same thing as well as he also tells you that this will have the greatest impact in your daily routine highly recommend checking that book out the next is always be flexible with your timetable you don't have to keep it very very rigid you have to allow yourself some flexibility of one or two hours after every single major activity that you do for example college you you might be expecting college to be from 8 to 12 but sometimes it might happen it might extend from 8 to 2 and you have to adjust for that flexibility and that will only happen when your timetable is a little bit movable a little bit shiftable because it's life and life is not so streamlined as making a perfect timetable and following it because there's going to be days when whatever you intend for something to happen that won't happen at all you might get disturbed from that so instead of wasting the whole day use the flexibility of your timetable and still keep on the grind i usually have a one one to one and a half buffer after college because that is one thing which i know that anything can happen after college and it might get extended for several reasons the most important one being going out with friends to eat somewhere the next point is something which i follow by every single day so i'll just tell you a story before i actually get to the point back in november and december i used to wake up pretty late i used to wake up at around 9 or 9 30 and i used to notice that i have very very short amount of hours in my day because my morning is essentially gone and right after i wake up i used to go to college and do everything i didn't even realize it but within a blink of the eye it could turn into night time and after like 11 or 12 i wasn't able to do anything but still i kept up for like two more hours and i slept at 2 or 2 30 and that's the reason why i woke up late in the morning what i noticed is that i was so unproductive at that time i did not go to the gym i did not study a lot i did not make the best quality videos that i really wanted to i joined a class later in march and i noticed that i needed to wake up early like at 6 30 for that class and that class was for one month so after joining the class essentially i have to wake up for 6 30 every single day so my timetable exactly changed i now got to sleep at 12 in the night and woke up at 6 30 after 30 or 40 minutes of my class when i came back at 7 30 or 8 i noticed that i had so much time in my hands because i could study like five or six lectures before i even went to my postings i could solve three or four question banks before my college even started before i got to college there were so many things i just did so once my college was over i noticed that there was so much free time in which i could do so many things and that's one of the reasons that you got to see double the amount of videos in april and this is going to continue for a very long amount of time because now i find that i have genuinely more amount of time in my life than i did before and the only reason is because i started waking up early now i did not wake up very astonishingly early like five or four like i used to do during my need preparation days but i just woke up two or three hours before than what i usually do and that that gave me so much boost in life so trust me if you just try this if you convert yourself to a morning bird everything will be so so good and you will find so much time in your life and you will be extremely very productive that's one of the reasons why most of the ceos and billionaires out there wake up very very early like jeff bezos or elon musk and they get to work as soon as possible but also remember sleep is very very important for you so don't just go ahead and wake up at six and sleep at three or four that would not work out for you very well from a medical point of view that is the next thing is this as you can see this is the schedule for posting of videos and it also says that who is going to film the video and who is going to edit the video all of that and as you can see this was a time table for april and we did all of that now why is it pasted on almira well the reason is keep being reminded of your schedule keep being reminded of what you want to do every single day and the best way is that if you have a huge long-term goal which you have planned for like one month paste it on a wall with dates and you just make it very very specific as you can see this one is absolutely color coded because that gives me a visual representation of what i want to do so if you're having multiple subjects like I do such as medicine, surgery, obs, and pediatrics all of these uh, subjects of final year I could add a color coding system and I could write okay Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday so Monday, Tuesday is medicine then surgery then obs, and pediatrics something like that this is a very arbitrary example but you can do the same for NEAT as well for biology, chemistry and physics the key here is keep being reminded of what the things you are doing you can paste it on Almira like I did or you can also have a desktop wallpaper or have a mobile phone wallpaper for the same what I earlier used to do was I used to make to-do lists every single day and I used to just write down what I have to do in every single day. Since I have now incorporated to pasting a timetable on my Almira, I exactly know what I want without making a to-do list in the first place. What you are also going to notice is that the longer you keep following a timetable, the better it's going to be because your mind will naturally adapt your circadian rhythm according to what you're going to do in your day. The last point perhaps might be the most important point of this video that is respect, review and reward. Respect your timetable and follow it. Try to follow it from your heart. Try to follow it because you know that it's going to get you so many good results. And make sure that you have internal self-dedication and self-motivation to keep following 
following your timetable ask your mom or dad sister or brother to keep you accountable for following that timetable that's the way you respect it and only and only if you respect it will you actually go and do it most toppers attribute their success to a timetable so always know that if you are making a timetable that is one of the first steps you can do to get to the top of the ladder second review your timetable so the first time you're going to make this schedule you might not like it in the first week so review that find out what are the improvements you can do find out how you can make it more flexible and find out what are the different things you can adjust and still have a lot more free time in your hand you and only you can do that it's not like something that i can give you this is the timetable and this is what you have to follow it every single day no it's always personalized review it and thirdly reward yourself for it reward yourself that means taking a break after you've completed a successful amount of time a short break can include going on a small trip with your friends or just going out for a walk it completely depends on you but if you reward yourself you are more likely to do the objectives in the first place so let's say my objective for the week is completing cardiovascular system for medicine and the reward for myself will be going out on a trip with friends or watching this movie called as doctor strange now that will keep me going for the entire week and i will feel like i just have to get it completed because in the end i'm taking a trip i'm taking a reward that would be my driving motivation to keep doing it more now i have told you how to make a timetable and how to make it last longer now it's your time to make this very beautiful timetable for each day and set your daily and weekly objectives and if you can post a story on instagram i might repost it on my account well that brings me to the end of this video if you haven't noticed well this is a new studio which we just made and if you want to see a studio tour you can click this link which will take you to the second channel yes absolutely so go ahead go to the second channel subscribe if you like the content over there as well as subscribe to this channel because all the videos take up a huge time effort and energy to make and subscribing in just two seconds would make up for all of that thank you so much for watching hit the like button on the way out it's your final i'll catch you in the next one goodbye